Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer with, um, with me, Jo Lacey, Parish Nurse, on Wednesday the 9th of November. It's wonderful to be back with you again. Um, I've uh, moved rooms for Morning Prayer because we have uh, some beautiful guests with us at home at the moment. We have Gregory and Natalia and, um, and we have baby Diana, so uh, we feel blessed to have them uh, joining us for um, the next six months or so. So, uh, so yes, we have a little bit less space in the house, but we uh, we are sharing and learning so much together, which is which is wonderful. So this morning, we commemorate Marjorie Kemp, um, circa thirteen seventy three um, to fourteen thirty eight. And um, Marjorie Kemp was an English Christian mystic known for writing through dictation. And there's a book of Marguerite, Marjorie Kemp. The book of Marjorie Kemp was, um, was one of the uh, key um, pieces of literature that she was, uh, that she was best known for. Um, and, and it was a work considered by many um, to be the first ever autobiography in the English language. And her book um, chronicles her domestic tribulations, her extensive pilgrimages to holy sites in Europe and, and the Holy Land, as well as her mystical conversations with God. And she's honored in the Anglican communion, but apparently she has not been canonized as a Catholic saint. So that's a little bit about Marjorie Kemp. So without any further ado, let us be quiet for a moment as we come before God. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth should proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you they make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day. And so, be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our appointed psalm this morning is Psalm 23. And the refrain is, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have appointed my head with oil. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, for ever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning, our Old Testament reading, is taken from Daniel, chapter 5, verses 13 to the end. And I'm going to read this reading this morning from the Bible narrative, the New International Reader's Version, which I think really explains this reading beautifully. So this is the New International Reader's Version. And bear with me a minute. So for a little bit of background, Daniel has been taken as a slave to Babylon where he was selected to serve in the royal court. And he was gifted and God looked after him and eventually he became, in effect, prime minister. Goodness, there's the thought. And uh, he and his friends were tested to the point of death because of their faith in God and obedience to his law. And the first six chapters tell of these testings uh, and include the famous stories of the fiery furnace, which is um, chapter three, uh, the handwriting on the wall, chapter five, uh, and the lion's den, chapter six. So I'm going to read for us this morning, chapter five, verses 13 to the end. So this is the writing on the wall and um, the piece that I'll be reading is um, Daniel interpreting the writing. So Daniel was brought to the king. The king said to him, are you Daniel? Are you one of the prisoners my father, the king, brought here from Judah? I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you. I've also heard that you have understanding and good sense and special wisdom. The wise men and those who practice magic were brought to me. They were asked to read this writing and tell me what it means, but they couldn't. I have heard that you are able to explain things and solve hard problems. I hope you can read this writing and tell me what it means. If you can, I will be dressed in purple clothes. A gold chain will be around my neck, your neck, and you will be made the third highest ruler of the kingdom. Then Daniel answered the king. He said, you can keep your gifts for yourself. You can give your rewards to someone else, but I will read the writing for you. I'll tell you what it means. Your majesty, the most high God, was good to your father, Nebuchadnezzar. He gave him authority and greatness and glory and honour. God gave him a high position. Then people from every nation became afraid of the king. It was true, no matter what language they spoke. The king put to death anyone he wanted to. He spared anyone he wanted to spare. He gave high positions to anyone he wanted to, and he brought down anyone he wanted to bring down. But his heart became very stubborn and proud. So he was removed from his royal throne. His glory was stripped away from him. He was driven away from people. He was given the mind of an animal. He lived with the wild donkeys. He ate grass, just as Knox does. His body became wet with the dew of heaven. He stayed that way until he recognised that the most high God rules over all kingdoms on earth. He puts anyone he wants to in charge of them. But you knew all that, Belshazzar. After all, you are Nebuchadnezzar's son. In spite of that, you are still proud. You have taken your stand against the Lord of heaven. You had your servants bring cups from his temple to you. You and your nobles drank wine from them. So did your wives and concubines. You praised your gods. 
the statutes of those gods are made out of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wooden stone. They can't see or hear or understand anything that you didn't honour God. He holds in his hand your very life and everything you do. So he sent the hand that wrote on the wall. Here is what is written. Mene, mene, tekel, pass in. And here is what these words mean. The word mene, or mean, means that God has limited the time of your rule. He has brought it to an end. The word tekel means that you have been weighed on scales and you haven't measured up to God's standard. The word Perez means that your authority over your kingdom will be taken away from you. It will be given to Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar commanded his servants to dress Daniel in purple clothes. So they did. They put a gold chain around his neck and he was made the third highest ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, was killed. His kingdom was given to Darius, the Mede. Darius was 62 years old. For the word of the Lord, we give thanks to God. And our second scripture reading this morning, our New Testament reading, is taken from Revelation, chapter 7, verses 1 to 4 and verses 9 to the end. And Revelation, as we know, is the last book in the Bible. And it was written at the time when Christians were suffering persecution for their faith. After this, I saw four angels standing at four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind could blow on earth or sea or against any tree. I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the, to the four angels who had been given power to damage earth and sea, saying, do not damage the earth or the sea or the trees until we have marked the servants of our God with a seal on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed out of every tribe, of the people of Israel. After this, I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes of people and languages, standing before the throne and before the man, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. And he said to me, these are they who come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. 
and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before our intercessions, I'm going to read the Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. Please do feel free to join me. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness from the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Now for our intercessions, our prayers. So let us be quiet for a moment as we pray to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our church. We pray for the growth of our church. We pray that people within our communities and beyond may join us in our worship and find you. People of all ages, Lord, we pray. For people of all colours, races and creeds, we pray. We pray for all those who minister in faith, including all those who work so, so hard, so tirelessly to support our churches day by day and our wider community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for Ukraine. We pray for the horrific and unprovoked attack on Ukraine. An act of great evil. We pray also, Lord, for the innocence of Russia. Now more than ever, we need to place our trust in you. In Jesus Christ, as we remember that you are not the author of confusion, but of peace. So we pray for a ceasefire, ceasefire, Lord, the withdrawal of Russian forces and for peace to prevail. We pray for the innocent, the women, the men, the children who are displaced, whose lives are disrupted. And, and to those who live in fear through the atrocities of war in the Ukraine and across the world, Lord. We pray for those with power, that they may make 
changes required. To actively work for peace and to seek peace with solutions to dispute and disagreement, Lord. And Lord, we pray that there may be a recognition of common and shared humanity and God's promise of flourishing life for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have recently died, and those who are mourning their loss, the loss of loved ones, Lord, the loss of those close who are this so special. Let us hold a moment's silence as we remember those close to us, Lord, who may have died, and for those who are experiencing pain and suffering in so many different ways, Lord, for those who are struggling at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, thank you for investing so heavily in the world in which we live. Help us to see that there is no one who can love us like you do. Help us to focus our thoughts and our priorities on heavenly things. And we pray, Lord, that this may be the way of thinking of our world leaders. And we pray for the focus to be on those in need. Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all our friends and families, those close to home, Lord, and those further afield, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that your presence will enable them, will enable all of us to trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, receive these prayers and transform us through them, that we may have eyes to see and hearts to understand not only what you do on our behalf, but what you call us to do, O oh Lord. What you call us to do. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. and our collect for this morning. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us.
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for morning prayer this morning. And I look forward to joining you again in two weeks time um, and for evening prayer in just under three weeks time the last Sunday of the month. God bless.